Hey everyone, welcome to New Game. So I just wrapped up a game with Gaul, which is um, one of the new civs in the uh, Civ 6 New Frontier Pass uh, September update. Um, these guys, I was really excited about these guys because their mines give you um, culture and then you can get um, apprenticeship very early by building this unique district. So I think, um, so I was really excited about them. I thought they, they had the potential to be maybe one of the best civs. Um, now, after having played a game, I think I maybe overestimated them a little bit. Still was really cool. I probably could have gone about the strategy a little bit better and, you know, maybe they would have been, maybe they, maybe they can be um, a top tier civ, um, but, they weren't quite as good as I thought they would be. So let's go through their abilities and then we'll talk about the general strategy. Um, so they have the King of the Eburons. I, <laughs> I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Um, <clears throat> your civilization gains culture equal to 20% of the unit's cost when a non-civilian is trained. That's really interesting. I probably could have used this a little bit better early on. Um, I didn't keep this bonus in mind, uh, so I probably could have built some early units. If you build a warrior or one of their unique warriors, um, which we'll discuss, that's 20 um, combat strength, so 20% of that. So you get about four culture, um, which could be pretty good. That is a nice little boost. Not overwhelming, but it's, it's decent, I think. Uh, especially early on. Later on in the game, I don't think it makes such a big deal. Um, melee, anti-cavalry, and ranged units receive plus two combat strength for every adjacent combat unit. That's cool. And this uh, this includes enemy units as well. So if you're surrounded uh, on six tiles, uh, completely surrounded, then you have a plus 12 combat strength. So that's really cool. In this game, I did plan to go to war early, but um, the, I tried the new Highlands map, and so everybody was pretty far apart, so I didn't have a chance to actually use this stuff really, but um, that will be fun to use. They have Hallstatt Culture. Uh, mines provide a minor adjacency bonus for all districts, a culture bomb of unowned territory, and receive plus one culture. So that is really nice, I would say. Um, they get culture from their mines right off the bat, uh, which is huge. And then later on, you have a chance to get apprenticeship very early in the game, like before turn 50, if you if you do it uh, a certain way. So that means your mines get an extra production. So for a good 20 to 25 turns, your mines can have an extra culture and an extra production. Um, and then for the duration of the game, your mines have extra culture. So I think that's a really nice boost. Um, the the mines give minor adjacency, so 0.5 adjacency f to all districts. Now the districts cannot be placed next to your city center, which is a big drawback. Um, so it is a bit hard to plan districts, but the mines help a little bit with that. Um, specialty districts do not receive a minor adjacency bonus for being adjacent to another district. That's another big hit. So you don't get, you can't group your districts together to get adjacency. Um, and these districts cannot be built adjacent to the city center. That's that's a big hit there. But um, but the mines, I think I think this boost up here with the mines could be uh, probably. Off, fully offsets this and and then some I would think it, it seems to be a really good boost um, the Opidum is a unique district uh, for Gaul that is cheaper and available earlier than the district it replaces the industrial zone so you get this with iron working I was able to build one of these in the ancient era uh, which got me the era points I needed for uh, golden age which wasn't even that beneficial in the end because I didn't have faith going into the classical era. But um, what the cool thing about this is if you get this really early, then you get apprenticeship. Uh, the Openum district is defensible. Um, when the first Openum is constructed, 
the apprenticeship technologies unlocked. So getting one of these really early, I think could be worth it. Otherwise, I don't know. I think it may be worth building these to cover all of your cities, building them strategically like you normally do with an industrial zone. Um, but I don't really know if it's worth building them right off the bat in most of your cities. Um, I tried to do that in some of my cities and it just took a long time to get campuses going. So that was, uh, yeah, that, they have a plus two production bonus if adjacent to a quarry. Yeah, it was kind of hard to, to really utilize this as well. Um, in terms of adjacency bonus, I feel like the industrial, the these things had similar adjacency um, as like a typical industrial zone. But they are half, uh, are they half cost? I think they're cheaper. I don't know if they're half cost, but um, definitely getting one early. I'd like to try another game with these guys. Getting one of these early like I did, but then uh, not worrying about the other ones till maybe after turn 100. Um, then they have their unique uh, unit, the uh, Gallic Unique Ancient Era unit that replaces the warrior. This unit has increased cost and receives plus 10 combat strength when fighting units with a higher base combat strength. Plus five combat strength versus district defenses. So again, with the map, I didn't get a chance to really use these guys, but they do seem really cool. Um, I mean, plus 10. So let's consider going up against the Swordsman, uh, 36 combat strength. Your unit is 20. Um, so 30, it would be when going against the Swordsman. And then let's say you have three units beside you that's an extra six combat strength and just like that you're up to the strength of the swordsman um, so that's really cool and you get one of these right off the bat when you start the game um, let's see so that gives you some arrow points as well so these guys are pretty easy to get a classical golden age with um, plus five combat versus district defenses that that Sounds pretty good as well. Again, I'd like to try a game with that. But this was basically just a standard science. Try. I tried to go for a fast science game. It didn't go as fast as I wanted. Um, uh, basically, starting with campuses or openums in every city. Um, I found it kind of hard to get out uh, settlers quick enough without faith. Um, so that was probably what set me back the most. Um, I didn't, I, I'd say these guys don't, probably aren't best with faith. Although you, you might be able to do something with that. But um, with their openum, and then you need to build campuses. And then if you're going the faith science approach, you need holy sites. I don't know. It seems a little too much. Um, let's see. So... We did uh, Deity Difficulty, Standard Speed, Highlands Map, Standard Map Size, Disaster Intensity was 2. We played with the Secret Society, so we were able to get into the Sanguine Pact, which was a lot of fun with the castles. Uh, had a really powerful capital. I think I got my production up to 420 at one point. Um, so Highlands Map, it was standard everything. Just wanted to give that map a new, uh, give that map a try, and then uh, the here are the seeds. If anybody wants to play on that map that I used, um, I will say the map, the Highlands map, is it looks really incredible right off the bat. You have hills everywhere, and you're getting really good yields. Um, but somehow in the end, I don't know that this this game didn't end up being as good as I thought. I thought with the the production, the um, culture from mines. Plus the Highlands map. I just had a lot of expectations for this game and it didn't quite meet those. But um, the Highlands map does look re really fun. I plan to try it with um, uh, Bull Moose Teddy and do like maybe an Earth Goddess strategy with him. But uh, yeah, basically a standard science game, um, getting campuses as early as I could, a lot of cities. 
um, rushing certain techs. Uh, I was able to get a few of the wonders, a few of the standard wonders, missed a couple. I think I missed Potala and Forbidden City. Um, the AI was really strong on this map, I would say. So that was interesting. But uh, fun game, definitely a fun sieve to play. Um, and uh, I look forward to trying them again. Cool, so enjoy.